here, but if you've got a change agent or an innovation person or someone that's coming in to switch things, there might be this might be the opportunity to take something and yeah, have to tell why people. Yeah, very often businesses are extremely inward focused. Sometimes it takes realizing that their customers don't think about them the way they think they think about them to drive real change through the organization. You know, I, I'd like to um, I'd like to talk about a couple of experiences of this. And, and this comes to something we were talking about earlier. And at some point, being a champion isn't good enough anymore. Being a change agent isn't good enough anymore. I actually believe that at some point we have to become politicians in order to uh, to work our way through the organization and bring silos together in ways that are going to actually get something out of it for, for everybody involved. Um, a lot of this has to do with translating information um, into ways that the people that we report to or the people that are, are roadblocking any progress or change need to hear or see things in ways that they get value out of it as well. So for example, I spent a lot of time <clears throat> proving that what's taking place, regardless of whether it's social, mobile, just new media in general, that there is economic impact to the organization today and over time. And I take that information, I study it, and then I present it you know, using the tools of choice like Excel and PowerPoint so that I can speak the language of executives so that they can actually see that there's benefit or risk, right, tangible benefit or risk in front of them. So for example, I, I ran a, a, a study that showed when before Verizon got the iPhone, how much money AT&T was going to lose within the first quarter, just based on public information that people were saying and sharing, what that economic impact would have so that they could take a proactive strategy and maybe change the messaging, change the marketing, change the service, whatever, what have you. But there was real economic impact that could be extrapolated from that. Every week, the same thing is done for Hollywood, where that information that's done in terms of movie performance and, and predictions are far more accurate than any other tools that are out there. It's just a matter of taking that information and translating it into a way that people can understand. And so a lot of that just comes down to this. What, what, what's the value of a business? What's the value of a brand, right? Well, some say that a brand is, is what people say when you're not in the room. And now that room is a center stage. And so what, <laughs> I, I, I read another study that went to an airline executive to say, you know, I, I went to your website and I took the words that were most commonly used and how you describe yourselves. And this is what that word cloud looked like. And then I went, to all of the media networks to see what the collective experience for your airline was. And this is what it looked like. And it was colorful, <laughs> to say the least. And so you the could, language was colorful. Absolutely. <laughs> and you could take from that, uh, I used uh, Turkey from Amazon, a so human turkey service, which was a real inexpensive way to extrapolate all of that in information, taking big data and making sense out of it, to show what that had in terms of economic impact. And it's really interesting how people start to pay attention once they understand that this is not bullshit anymore, that this is actually going to impact the bottom line. By the way, that is a technical term, bullshit. <laughs> we, we used a lot of the uh, Also, Michael, to your point, um, too, um, the thing is that um, so there's a lot of pressure right now coming from customers from the bottom up. And it's really intense pressure. And what happens is companies are forced to do certain things at a certain point, too, when it comes to developing actual strategies. And a lot of them screw it up. There's no question about that. Um, if anyone knows about that, it's you. Um, you've, you've covered them incredibly well. Um, but the thing is that um, that's remarkable is that there are companies that are deciding based on that that they have to do something strategically. A good example, actually, just in a big, broad scope of things is during the worst period of recession, when things were really bleak, the CRM industry uh, revenues kept going up, right? Because the CRM industry didn't suffer for a minute, really, at least directly, didn't suffer from the technology standpoint and also from even the consulting side during that period because people were forced to recognize that the one thing that they had to concentrate on was retaining customers. They had to. So cheaper to keep them than to get new ones. Well, it, exactly, exactly right. And consequently, they started investing in what they could. And a lot of it was reactive. Granted, I mean, it was reaction to what was going on. But the other thing that that actually drove was um, a 
leading edge group of companies who began proactively innovating and proactively developing strategies for engagement with their customers. And you know, we've, we've heard the examples of, you know, the one that I've beaten to the ground pretty much was Procter & Gamble, which actually I'm not the only one beaten to the ground, I say two-thirds of the world has. But, uh, you know, but there's also companies like, well, for example, um, this one was a huge surprise to me, to be honest. I, I had to do a, a call with a large national oil monopoly, really, uh, uh, pushed up to shove about a week ago. And it was uh, in Europe. And so I, you know, I had to do this call at like 5.30 in the morning, right before a client meeting at 8. And so I, had, I did a lot of research because I really was kind of puzzled as to what oil was doing in this thing, really. And I found out in the course of all of this that Royal Dutch Shell, oddly enough, and again, I said national, so it wasn't them. Right? Uh, Royal Dutch Shell has been doing an enormous amount of strategies for, for literally customer engagement and innovation. So, for example, they have uh, what they call echo marathons, which are green initiatives that involve literal marathons, too. And they have an entire social site set up for tracking the echo marathons, which have hundreds and hundreds of thousands of uh, registered followers for the site. Then they have a, a, there's a small tab that just kind of sits off, or a small menu item that sits off to the left, and all it says is innovation. And you click over there, and you, all of a sudden you see there's a whole area for customers with innovative ideas for, and this is of course B2B, B2C both, for innovative ideas for the industry to go and develop innovative ideas for the industry with them. And it gives the uh, it gives access and, and things like that. And it, you know, Procter and Gamble, of course, has the, the larger one, the you know, Connect and Develop program, which is their baby and is hugely popular and eminently successful. And IBM has innovation jams and so on. Um, but this was a strip, sort of a, 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 a stripped down version of that. It wasn't complicated. It was pretty straightforward. But what you're dealing with there is the companies that, because of crisis in some cases or because of recognition that during a time where there's difficulty, one of the best things to do is innovate, be good, the best things to do is be progressive, one of the best things to do is invest in customers, one of the best things to do is actually be proactive, they begin to actually push forward and develop real strategies that become, you know, they're probably overstating it by calling them paradigms for the industry, but at least reasonable cases for the rest of the industry to emulate. And we're starting to see that in all kinds of uh, places. So, you know, we're still early stage again, but when it comes to those kind of corporate strategies, pressure from customers is going to always drive them.